patients. I hadn't been into a hospital since March 11th. After the World Health Organization and CDC characterized the COVID crisis as a pandemic. That changed due to a business critical meeting last week at Advocate Christ Hospital, about 30 minutes outside of Chicago. When I pulled into the hospital parking lot, I saw makeshift tents outside of the emergency room. Healthcare professionals dressed in head to toe protective gear. The reality and humanity of the moment hit me. And I was confronted with questions. Where do we go from here? How do we respond? On my drive home, I was convicted with the thought that all we can do, all we can do is press forward. That brings me to today. Over a thousand leaders from across the world coming together as a collective of humanity, drawn together to press forward the beauty. If this is the first time attending a Leader Impact Forum, we want to give you a special welcome. Leader Impact is a global movement of leaders dedicated to having a lasting impact. We believe that true impact occurs when a leader's personal, professional, and spiritual life is fully engaged. We have a network in over 350 cities across the world. Many of those cities are represented on this webinar today. We host events like this throughout the year and have a growing network of peer groups that meet weekly across cities around the world. Today's topic from now to next, key strategies to moving forward has never been more appropriate and relevant. And I'm confident we will receive great value professionally, personally, and spiritually. We will not be doing the Q&A today. Instead, over the next two weeks, we'll be offering a series of two interactive Zoom meetings to discuss what we learned today. Please use the chat box in the bottom right-hand corner to either comment or ask questions as these will help frame the discussions in our next two sessions. Now to our speaker, Donna Brighton, Chief Ideas Officer at Brighton Leadership Group is a culture change strategist and leadership coach. Her clients include Kraft Foods, Lockheed Martin, TD Bank, and Mayo Clinic, as well as mid-sized and small businesses and not-for-profits. Donna helps leadership teams increase their effectiveness and has facilitated virtual work transformations and other large-scale strategic change. She helps leaders lead from the exponential power that comes from the core of who they are, rather than trying to fit into a leadership mold. She is the author of the Rebel Leaders Field Guide to Your Leadership Voice and creator of the Catalyst Questions Cards for Leaders. Today, Donna will present the five facets of forward action based on change leadership, and neuroscience principles to help you prepare for the future despite the present crisis. She will also share how faith fuels her life. Donna, it is my pleasure to welcome you to the Global Leader Impact Forum. Thank you, Nosa. Welcome, everyone. 17 years ago, I was facing a transition point. I was part of a leadership team that had built a national consulting practice from $350 million to over $36 million in just three years. We were awarded the practice of the year and we were celebrating our success. And then our corporate office made a strategic decision. The practice I had worked so hard to build was shifting away and was no longer going to be in existence. I was devastated. That meant I had to disband my team that I had handpicked and the culture that we had created which delivered extraordinary results. It meant saying goodbye to a team that I loved that worked magic for our clients. 
and it meant that I was facing an unknown future. What was next? Transitions are times that we stand on a threshold. We straddle what was and what could be. It's the in-between place that we all go through during times of change, and this was no different. So it's really helpful to understand change is the external situation or circumstances, but the internal piece is the process that we go through to come to terms with that new situation. Change is external while transition is internal. So 17 years ago, as I faced that transition, I did a lot of soul searching, as probably many of you are during this time of transition. At that time, I made the choice to go back to school and get a master's in organizational leadership. And a year later, I started my own company. Looking back, I can see the disruptive power of change and how my choices or response to that change shaped where I am right now. So this is your moment of decision. I'm calling it a liminal moment. It's a term that comes from anthropology and it describes that disorientation that you feel through a transition or rite of passage from one way of being to a new way of being. While you may not be able to control your circumstances, you have a choice in how you will respond. Today, I'm going to share with you the lessons I've learned from my own journey through transitions and the lessons I've learned as I've journeyed with countless leaders through their transitions. Why do some people thrive while others seem to crash and burn? What are the key actions you can take to move from now to next? So as you can see from this illustration, there's past now, the present, and the future. And while the past can be a very helpful source of lessons and even comfort in recognizing that we've been through challenges before, the reality is that the only time that exists is right now, the present. You can't change what's happened in the past and you cannot predict the future as much as we would all like to. But that doesn't mean you can't have a future focused and be prepared for the future. The reality is though, you can only make decisions in the now. So that brings me to a really important place and that's your starting point. Because what I've experienced so many times is that as I've worked with leaders and their leadership team, there are often not on the same page. They're not often starting at that same place. So my first bit of encouragement to you is to make sure that everyone on your team has the same understanding of your starting place. What is your current reality? It may be a different reality than yesterday and that could be a different reality than tomorrow, but you can't run the race to the future if you're all starting in a different place. So a suggestion here that I, I shared with a leader just last week is to create an assumption tracker. What do you know today? What do you understand about the current situation that's driving your decisions? Write that down. Keep a log of all the things that you are assuming and the decisions or actions that you're taking as a result of those assumptions. And then each day you can review them, reassess your starting place for that day. Because the uncertainty of change from day to day and the circumstances that are continually shifting around you do not need to paralyze you. The assumption tracker captures where you are at at any given day. So each day, begin by asking yourself where you're starting from. What is true right now? Not what could be true, what's rumored to be true, but what you know right now. So then we're gonna get into the forward actions that you need to take in order to move from now to next. 
So we're going to begin with focus. And I am going to share with you a little bit of insight from a race car driver. So imagine that you're driving a car like this around the racetrack. Maybe you're in a position to move forward and, and take over. Things are going really well. And then all of a sudden, this appears ahead of you. How do you respond? I was reading about the counterintuitive approach that many race car drivers take in this situation. When a race car driver encounters an explosion like this ahead of them on the racetrack, how do they move forward? What do you think? If you saw this while you were driving around a race car track, what would you do? Well, if you saw an explosion of this magnitude and you were an experienced race car driver, believe it or not, you would head right into the middle of that explosion. If you try to go around it, it's likely that you'll crash into other cars. So how does this relate to the topic of focus? Well, during times of challenge, crisis, when we see things and circumstances around us that look overwhelming and have the potential to swallow us up, our bodies respond to our perception of reality. Fear itself can limit your focus. It paralyzes your potential, obliterates your optimism, and can even sabotage your success. So during times of crisis, the most important thing to do is recognize what is your response to the circumstances, to what's happening around you. And typical reactions can be fight, flight, run away, or freeze, not really sure what to do. So I'm going to share with you a way to overcome that, and that is through focus. By taking an intentional stand of where you're going to focus, what is going to be your future, what are the next actions that you can take, that will help shift your brain from fear to the future. So that forward action, let's talk about that. Again, forward action, we're focusing on what matters most, and then we're going to say what actions do we need to take. Now, as you consider the actions in moving forward, there's something really essential for you to recognize. Are you simply moving to stay busy and being on that cycle of busy? Or are you actually taking action that moves you forward to your focus? And that's something that you need to consider each and every day because things are changing each and every day. And so by retaining that focus where you decide what matters most and taking actions toward those priorities, you will ensure forward action to the future. And one of the ways that you can do that is uh, through a document that you can create for yourself. And I'll show you an example uh, toward the end of our presentation today. And this is where you actually write out on a piece of paper what your focus is your three or so priorities, three to five, not more than that, but ideally around three. And then under each priority, what action will you take for that day? This is a transformative way for you to create structure during this time to ensure that you're moving forward and not falling back through this crisis. Now, for those of you who are running an organization, there's four essential actions. I'm sure many of you are familiar, but it never hurts to remind you. First of all, as you consider your actions and what you need to do, caring is number one. And when I say care, that's in three dimensions. You need to care for your customers and clients, care for your team, and care for yourself. So as a leader in your organization, what are you doing right now today to reach out and communicate your caring to your customers and clients, your members, uh, your fellow colleagues, to your team? And then how are you caring for yourself? Second essential action, cash flow. 
And I say that because if you have no money, you will have no mission. So part of living out the purpose, the vision of your organization requires that you stay focused and take action to manage your cash flow well. Third is communication. And all of us know how important communication is, but it's even more so during times of challenge and crisis like today. So my recommendation for you is increase the frequency of your communication and decrease the duration. So where you might have had one team meeting per week in the past, perhaps you have two or three team meetings, they just are shorter. So frequent communication is absolutely essential and is one of the key actions you need to be considering to move yourself and your organization forward. And fourth, in the essential actions for the organization is a commitment to your goals. Ensuring that you set your focus, define your actions, and then remain committed that everybody is aligned, understands where you're going. It will, again, increase a sense of focus and forward action for the entire organization. So again, forward action requires focus, taking action, and then being intentional. So what do I mean by that? Well, I'm going to relate this to your organizational culture because right now everything has changed. It's a brand new game and that can be good and it can be a problem. How can it be good? Well, during times of change, you have an opportunity to hit the reset button on cultural habits and practices that are not working for your organization. It's a problem because the culture that you so carefully crafted and built can come apart if you're not intentional. So my question to you is what are the daily routines and habits that you're practicing to ensure that your organizational culture supports your strategic future? As you decided what your focus was, you outlined your actions, what are the cultural behaviors that need to be in place to ensure that that actually occurs. Some recommendations for you as you consider being intentional about your culture. And I like to say there's three kinds of culture. There's accidental culture, which just occurs. And right now there's many accidental cultures that are being created as people have shifted to working virtually and the intentionality is not there. So it can be accidental, it can be intentional, or it can be hypocritical where we say one thing and do something different. So this step, this action to move forward is being intentional in the organizational habits and practices that you maintain day to day in your organization and your team. So some tips on how you might do that. First of all, reflect on your purpose, on your vision, your mission, and your values, and ask yourself, how do you need to be living this out right now? How can those values be reflected? So for example, in this virtual environment, if you have a value of integrity or innovation, what does that look like? What are the behaviors that people need to be living out in order to make those values come to life? So be intentional about the practices that you put in place. So forward action, three things so far that we've covered. The focus is where are you going based on knowing where you're starting from, where are you going to. Action is what are you doing? What are those steps that you're taking to move forward into that focus? And then intention is how you're going about doing it. How are you behaving and acting so that the actions you take and the focus, your direction, are done in a way that supports, builds, and grows your culture in an intentional way. So I mentioned that there's actually five facets of forward action. We talked about focus, action, and intention. And now I'd like to talk about, about time. So there's 
three things I'd like you to consider in forward action when it comes to time. Many of the leaders that I work with have recognized the value and importance of scheduling thinking time. And now as it's several weeks into the COVID crisis, I've experienced um, a, a, many leaders have had a chance to breathe now. And during this pause, my encouragement to them and to you is do you have thinking time? Thinking time is the opportunity to pause and reflect, to pay attention to what's going on and to understand kind of decision wise where you need to go. Because without thinking time, you're only caught in a treadmill of action. And while we agree that having focus and taking action is essential in an intentional way, if you don't pause and think, you risk making decisions that are less effective. So during thinking time, some ways that you can go about doing that are ask some questions. Now here's something fascinating that I learned about the brain. Many of us are familiar with the concept that there's self-talk occurring within our brains, kind of a conversation we're having inside our heads. And many of us are paying attention to that and managing that, being careful of the things that we're saying inside of our head. But are you paying attention to the questions that you're asking yourself? So as you think about the future, are you asking yourself, what are the possibilities of the future? Or, oh my goodness, how do I stay out of bankruptcy? So there's a lot of important questions and the questions that you ask yourself during thinking time can change the trajectory of where your brain is focused. So be careful and conscientious about the questions you're asking, but schedule that time and make sure that you are reflecting not just acting. The second thing to consider in this area of time is time for yourself. And I'm sure you're all familiar with the concept that you need to put your own oxygen mask on before you help others. And as a leader, how are you taking care of yourself? How are you ensuring that you're maintaining your health, your well being? and your mental state. So during this time, take time for yourself. And the last point in this section on time is connection time. You've probably heard the quote that you can go far or you can go fast. And if you go far, you'll be going with others and going fast is generally by yourself. Unfortunately, Fast and furious often leads to collapse. So connection is about staying connected to yourself, your loved ones, your organization, and a community. And I say that because I mentioned how I started my own business many years ago. And during the crisis of 2008 and 2009, we reached a point in our business where everything fell apart, kind of like today. And at that time, we had an amazing community around us, a community that was enabling us to maintain our focus on what was possible, not the pain of what we were observing around us. As part of that community, we were in supported, encouraged, and given hope to see what was possible. And through that community, I avoided business collapse. So, how many of you are connected to a community, to a, a supportive group that you can process and share things with, that you can discuss these challenging times and some of the decisions that you're faced with, sometimes really, really hard decisions? So community is invaluable. And during the next two weeks, you're going to have an opportunity to participate in a community conversation. We're gonna be joining together again as a large group and then breaking out into smaller groups so you can actually have a conversation with fellow leaders and process with them. Because during times of change, one of the uh, encouragements I give to leaders 
is they need to find a place, a trusted, safe space where they can process for themselves the change and transition that they're going through. Now, it's wonderful if you have a supportive spouse or family or even leadership team that you're working with, and it's great to have conversations with them. But beyond those support resources, having a community around you is incredibly important during times like this. And that's what Leader Impact can provide if you're not already participating in a Leader Impact group. So we talked about forward action, focus, action, intention, taking time to think, taking time for yourself, taking time for connection. This last point from moving from what's now to what's next is about hope. Hope is an optimistic state of mind. It's based on the expectation of a positive outcome with respect to events and circumstances, either in your own life, your organization, or the world at large. Its definition means everything from expecting with confidence or cherishing a desire with anticipation. A wonderful definition that I heard about hope was hold on, this pain will end. So as we think about hope, what I'd like to share with you in this particular action point is the importance of mindset. What is your perspective? How are you paying attention to what's happening around you? See, there's something in your brain, it's called the RAS or the reticular activation system. And what I find very fascinating is that we're bombarded with endless amounts of information. In fact, I don't know about you, I feel like I'm having more information to process now than ever before. And it's more information than our brain can possibly process and understand. And so what happens as we um, focus is that we tell that reticular activation system through our focus what to pay attention to. Setting goals is a way of activating the RAS. And so when we set goals and we decide where we're going, what our future focus is, that, sh that shifts our mindset into a forward focus. Action enables our brain to move from fear into hope, from worry into hope. So as you think about your current situation, where are you at? What is your mindset? Something really fascinating is that mindset determines behavior. What you believe, what you see determines how you act. And I shared with you the importance of intention, right? How are you showing up? Because one of the really powerful quotes I've heard is that crisis does not shape character, it reveals character. And so the opportunity for you as you're going through these challenging times is to pay attention to your mindset. What is your emotional state? What's going on? And what are you paying attention to around you? Because whether you realize it or not, your emotions are contagious. People catch what's going on within you. And if you're not careful, you, they may be catching something you do not want them to catch. I've talked to many leaders over the last weeks, and there was one conversation in particular that stood out to me. It was a leader that was talking about the challenge of balancing both the changing demands of work, having people at home, and, and dealing with their expectations. And, and this leader said, you know, you know, it's like I feel overwhelmed by all the expectations. And emotionally, she was just feeling spent, completely drained from all those demands on her time. And what I shared was, you know, we can get emotionally slimed 
So if you if you're familiar with the movie Ghostbusters, they, there was this um, concept where you know people just got impacted by this slime, and I see that happening today, right? Where people and their emotional states can slime you. And so as a leader, what is your emotional state? What is your mindset? What is your perspective? And what are you sharing with those around you? So we talked about focus and the importance of focus because your brain is constantly scanning the environment for information. Is there something threatening or is there something positive and rewarding? And you have control over that based upon your focus. Then we talked about action. How do you decide where to take that focus and move forward into action? Because action shifts your brain from fear into the future. Then we talked about intention. The importance of being intentional in how you show up and in the actions, words, and behaviors you use that will either shape your culture in the direction you wish it to be shaped or will destroy the culture that you've been working very hard on and diligently. And then finally, mindset and hope. So moving from what's now to what's next, there's something else to recognize in these five facets of forward action. For me, during this challenging time, I'm talking about right now, I faced another choice. I mentioned, you know, we have a business, as many of you do. And in our organization, uh, during March, everything came to a screeching halt. All of the uh, client engagements that we had booked, the speaking opportunities, everything stopped. And we had a choice just like I shared with you, where were we going to focus? What actions were we going to take? How are we going to be intentional about continuing to build on the culture that we created? So I just want to share a little bit about my story. And during this time, there have been moments of fear. There have been moments of overwhelm and concern, uncertainty about the future, I like to talk about the FUD factor, fear, uncertainty, and doubt, right? And that's something that many of us experience. But I practice these forward actions that I shared with you today. And through that experience, through this challenge, I'll just share with you the story of what we did in our business. So we paused and took some time and reflected on what are the possibilities? And I call that pivoting to possibility. And in less than a week, my organization, my team worked together and built and operationalized the virtual work success website. Now for us, that enabled us, instead of wallowing in, oh my goodness, the crisis, what's happening, what's going on, we were able to set a focus and take action that moved us from what's now to what's next. And I don't know what's gonna happen as a result of that. Is it going to work? I'm not sure. But I will tell you this, that in the midst of this uncertainty, the doubt and the fear that can feel overwhelming, it was a powerful way for us to take control of the things that we could control and move forward by building a completely new business from the ground up. And that's the chance that each of you have during this time. How are you going to operationalize, to pivot, to move from what's now, from the pain that you see around you to the possibility of the future? Hidden in that focus, action, intention, taking time and being hopeful, there's something else, and that is faith. And during times of challenge and crisis, as we move from now to next, this may be how you feel as you're in this liminal moment, moving from what you knew to what's going to be. 
and you're not sure about the possibilities. You don't know where things are going to go. So as you consider from what's, what's now to what's next, I encourage you to leverage these five facets of forward action. So I've talked about the things that were buried in those words, and that is faith. So faith is absolutely necessary as you consider focus, action, intention, taking time and being hopeful. Because faith is having complete trust or confidence in someone or something. And to transform requires trust. So I ask you, what are you trusting? Where are you placing your faith? And I'd like to share with you, I'm not religious, but I am spiritual. And I love Jesus. My relationship with him has transformed my life and my leadership. And it's that faith that's enabled me to apply these five facets of moving forward. So as you think about moving into your future, something to consider that instead of being stuck, you can focus, take action and move forward, create your future, predict your future and make a difference. So I want to acknowledge that there was a question around um, customers, your team, and yourself. And that was in relationship to caring. So I talked about the time and caring. And Dave asked, in what order should these be implemented? So as you think about your customer, your team, and yourself, it's a great question. Um, I would say right now, you absolutely need to take care of yourself because if you're not healthy, you can't take care of anyone else. So make sure that you are doing the things you need to to stay healthy and well. Um, secondly, I would say your team and helping your team then take care of your customers and clients. Um, some of the things that I've heard that are really powerful right now, no matter what type of organization or business or practice that you are in, the opportunity for you is to reach out and care. Just express your concern and ask how you can help. Because in times of crisis, people remember these things. They remember how you show up. And I heard a terrible, terrible story about an organization that was actually terminating their people via recorded Zoom calls. I mean, how terribly impersonal is that? And it goes back to, I'm going to move back here. When I was talking about intention in these five forward actions, when you are intentional, it means you are acting in a way that builds your culture for the future. And I'm going to share an example in just a minute of those action trackers I told you about. Um, but if you are taking care of yourself your people, and then collectively you and your team can take care of your customers. That's going to give you the best chance of success and will establish your reputation far into the future. Because people may forget the things that you say and do, but they always remember how you make them feel. And reaching out with care and concern and making people feel that, feel that care will last forever. So I was sharing with you throughout the presentation a couple recommendations, and these are some next steps. So practice faith. Practice establishing your focus, taking action, being intentional about how you are going to um, show up and behave, taking time for yourself, and maintaining a hopeful mindset. So practice faith. Second suggestion as far as a next step is document. And on the screen are two examples of things I spoke about during our conversation today. The first is the assumption tracker. 
Today, there's so many things that are shifting around us, right? I mean, what you learn is fact one day, don't worry about wearing a mask to the next day. They are mandatory. Everybody has to have one. I mean, things are changing constantly. And in order for you to manage that starting place so that everybody's on the same page and you can move forward successfully, my suggestion is create that assumption tracker for yourself. Document day by day as, you, um, as things change, what are the assumptions that you're making in your business, in your organization, and then what are the actions or decisions that you're taking as a result of those assumptions? Now, why is that helpful for you? Well, five days from now, 10 days from now, when there's a completely new set of information, you're able to continuously update those decisions along with the assumptions so that you stay on top of things and ensure that you're acting with the most current information. So use that assumption tracker as a way to manage from day to day what's going on. The second thing to document is your focus and as a result of your focus what are your priorities so in this example that you might see here on screen a priority may be your business or organization the other people in your life friends and family and then your health just as an example so you decide what those priorities or goals are for yourself and then every single day take an action toward accomplishing that goal. Whether it's in your business, take an action. If your priority is others, take an action. And for your health, take an action, get sleep, spend some reflection time for yourself, whatever that looks like every single day. And there's power in this. I personally have been doing this um, over the last oh, month or so. Every single day tracking, what am I doing intentionally to move things forward? And the power in that is it gives you an opportunity to see the progress that you're making. Because in times of change, it's really easy to feel unstable and unsettled. And this gives you clarity on how you're moving forward in those most important and essential ways. So um, with that, I'm going to um, just say thank you. It's been a pleasure. Um, to speak with you today and share with you some thoughts are moving from now to next. Donna, thank you so much. That was a amazing message um, that I know we all can glean from. To acknowledge you for one second, thank you for your boldness, your insightful and vulnerable stories or no, are, are things that we're, we're, we're going to be able to hold on to uh, for a very long time. I know for, uh, for a fact, what I wrote down uh, was that acronym on hope. I'll never forget it. Hold on, this pain will end. The importance of mindset is huge. And the faith uh, posture that you took in the five steps to forward action um, I know for, for future conversations in our next two sessions, um, it's going to make for some incredible, incredible conversation. Thank you. Leader Impact hosts events like this throughout the year, but also has a growing network of groups that meet regularly throughout the city. Like the event today, the focus is to help leaders grow personally, professionally, and spiritually. And appear environment to use their influence, affluence, skills, and time to make a meaningful difference in their homes, at work, in their city, and in their world. Impact occurs when a leader's personal, professional, and spiritual life is fully engaged. It's an easy concept to grasp, but takes a lifetime to master. It doesn't happen by chance. It takes work. A leader impact group will accelerate your growth as a leader. These groups are about learning, accountability, challenge, and connection. Many on this call are in leadership, leader impact groups, whether you're a seasoned CEO or a young leader like myself running a startup to change the world. There's a leader impact group that will fit 
for you. Normally these groups meet at various times throughout the city, throughout cities across the world uh, to fit your schedule. However, in this new world of COVID-19, we'll be offering these peer groups virtually. We would like to invite you to participate in a two week leader impact peer learning group at the same time, Thursday, 10 a.m. Central Standard Time for the next two weeks. Shortly, you will receive an email that you will be able to register and you will also be able to have an on-demand viewing of this recorded presentation. Donna will be on the call for the next two weeks to frame our discussion and then you will be passed to a discussion leader, a marketplace leader like yourself in a Zoom room for what I am sure will be a robust discussion with peers from around the world. If you are watching a recorded version of this uh, version of this forum, we will also be offering a couple of different time slots for the two week leader impact virtual group that might be more suitable for your time zone. Once again, click on the link in the email you receive tomorrow to register. We have entitled this three part forum series leading forward. You won't want to miss the second forum in this series three weeks from today on May 7th. Our speaker will be Braden Douglas. Braden is the founder of Crew Marketing Partners, a pioneering agency model that combines strategic marketing and creative, and, and creative product for fast growing companies. In 10 years, Crew has won numerous award, awards and has been named one of the fastest growing agencies in Canada with 65 employees and offices in Vancouver and Oakville, Ontario. He is a sought after speaker and he will be addressing impact in a pandemic, the key elements you need to lead in times of crisis. In closing, I wanna thank each one of the leaders on the call today and the incredible team from Leader Impact and Crew Ministries that executed this first time global event flawlessly. Leaders in these challenging times, may we lead. May we lead with compassion and may we serve and lead with love. Thank you for your time and I hope you have a blessed day.